and live here in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, here doing mixing here, live at Sunbelt Media Days, day two, Southern Miss taking center stage here in New Orleans, here in Sunbelt Media Day, uh, here with your instant reactions after a full day of coverage. I got up at about 4 a.m. this morning and uh, drove here and had interviews with all the head coaches in the West as well as interviews with Jaleel Clemens, Ty Mims, and Will Hall, who represented the Golden Eagles of Southern Mississippi today. And a uh, really great day of coverage. And I think the first and foremost point uh, for, for the Golden Eagle fans to understand is that Southern Miss head coach Will Hall understands the expectations this season. He understands the doubts. He understands uh, where Southern Miss fans have uh, had their concerns about the program. And I sat down with them for about 20 minutes and uh, had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. And I actually just asked him and I said, sir, um, you know, why do you think people doubt you? And he just responded and he said, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. We've done well. We've recruited well. We've, we've built back up the program. It just hasn't resulted on the field, but they have the players, they have the position makers. And, you know, a couple snaps go their way last, go their way last year. Maybe that we're talking about a different team. Maybe we're talking about the team that makes the next step. But he's ready to prove the doubt is wrong. He thinks that this is the year that the Golden Eagles have a chance to, uh, uh, you know, potentially uh, compete for the Sun Belt West title, and not only the Sun Belt West title, but also um, a, a title of the Sun Belt in general to win the Sun Belt championship. So uh, he believes that the retention that they bring back, the talent they bring back, but also the three years of recruiting that they've been on the top three in the recruiting on the Sun Belt, that they have an ability to really shine in that area. And uh, I, I tend to agree with them. When you look down the board of what Southern Miss is bringing back this season, maybe they don't have the exact skill position players uh, that they would normally have, such as a Jason Brownlee or a Frank Gore Jr., but the depth of this team, I think, is so crucial to who they will be in 2024. And I think they highlight that all across the board today whether it's um, the depth in the running back room, whether it's the depth in the wide receiver room, whether it's the depth in the offensive line room, uh, whether it's the depth in the uh, defensive back room, whatever it is, they have depth in very certain areas and they have experienced football players and that all starts with the quarterbacks. Uh, Will Hall said today that Tate Rodemaker and Ethan Crawford are kind of in the front running for uh, the quarterback positions. And uh, John White still in the position uh, that, you know, you, you're a freshman, you, you're kind of going up against two players who have experienced and have, uh, have, have played in a, a college football game before. And Will Hall specifically stated won a college football game before. And he thinks both of those players are in position to do that for Southern Miss. And uh, it all starts there. If they can get a guy there that they can really depend on throughout the entire season, because Will Hall hasn't had that throughout his entire tenure at Southern Miss, then maybe they can start to turn the page. Um, now, when you look at the West, you you know, you know normally look at teams like South Alabama, Louisiana, uh, that, that kind of run the rest of Detroit. Now, three of those teams, actually all three of those teams that I just mentioned, South Alabama, uh, Troy, and uh, ULM, all have a new head coach, and six of the seven teams in the West all are bringing in a new quarterback. So a lot of fresh new faces here in the Sun Belt. Uh, a team like ULM has 72 new players on their roster, which is something that you know is kind of unheard of in college football about five years ago. But now uh, it seems like it's a normality, right? That, that a team would um, have such a turnover on their roster, ULM doing that. But Southern Miss, kind of different. They actually retain many of their players and instead of turning over their roster, which is uh, get rid of players and, and gain more, they kept their players and got more from the transfer portal. So that's kind of the position you want to be in. And I think that's why Will Hall kind of specified that in, in, in my discussion with him and in, in his discussion in the main stage. Now, now next, uh, I talked with Jaleel Clemens and Ty Mims, who was the representees for the Golden Eagles today. And uh, both said that they were expected to be picked last in the Sun Belt poll. They, in fact, were not picked last. They were picked third to last. Uh, but they were obviously picked near the bottom. And he said that he was surprised that they were not picked dead last. And he said that that's, you know, the rat poison, the whole thing, that it doesn't really mean anything. They like it. They like being picked last. They like not being known. 
And I just think it's an interesting caveat to um, what Southern Miss feels like they can be this year. You know, the players are saying they want to be picked last. They don't want anybody to really take them seriously. And then you have a head coach who's saying, man, this could be one of the best rosters that we've ever assimilated. And he compared it to um, – not necessarily the talent, obviously, but a Georgia or a South Carolina or, or teams like that, uh, that, you know, when they, the reason they're so good now and they weren't quote unquote that good in uh, 10, 15 years ago is because of player retention. It's because of talent retention that you have a talented player and you, you, you develop that talent after three years. And that's kind of what Southern Miss has done with the players on their roster uh, this season. Now, obviously, Southern Miss fans know and, and, and understand this that this last June, uh, the death of MJ Daniels has really rocked uh, the Southern Miss football team in many regards. And I talked with uh, Jaleel Clemens again, uh, who is on the defense. He, he knows, he knew MJ very well. And um, he talked with me about of uh, the fact that the team wants to dedicate the 2024 season to MJ Daniels. And I thought that was just a nice touch. Um, and Will Hall echoed it. He said he was honored when he heard that. He said he was very proud of his team for the way they've responded. And um, he said it was the most unfortunate death he's ever seen, he's ever been a part of. He said he loved the guy. Honestly, it seemed like everybody did in the team. And uh, they're dedicating the season to him. And I wonder, and I, and I asked, uh, uh, Ty, like, does that mean, do you, do you feel like that this team will play with an extra edge uh, just because of that? And he said, absolutely. And this is, I know, obviously a, a, a projected captain of the team that passed away. Um, so just a, a significant loss, obviously, as we covered last month. Uh, but it's interesting to hear now how the, the leadership on the team has kind of developed and been able to bring uh, the Golden Eagles back on track with that. And then finally, for the final takeaway from today, um, a lot was talked about the EA College Football 25 video game that recently came out uh, two weeks ago. And, um, you know, a lot, I think every single player, every single team was asked that question on the main stage. And I, I actually asked privately Jaleel Clemens and Ty Mims uh, what they thought of the game. And, and Jaleel Clemens said that he played himself uh, against Alabama uh, the first time he played he said he had eight tackles for loss and uh, five sacks he said it was an FBS record so uh, obviously he's had fun playing himself and Ty Mims was kind of mad he said that he wasn't fast enough he said his 93 speed wasn't right he said he should have been more of a 96 or 97 speed uh, on the game so it's really cool to see that and then uh, I asked Will Hall what he thought about uh, the video game he said he did try to play it he said the controls were too hard for him uh, but he didn't teach his younger son how to build a dynasty which I thought was a neat touch. He, he sat there, he said, for two or three hours and just walked him through all of the ways to build that dynasty um, and, and his son. And he said instead of playing, he goes up and sits with his son and watches him play the game. So really nice touch. And every player here said the same thing, basically, that they played it when they were younger, and now that they're playing themselves, it's an unbelievable experience. So that's all the takeaways uh, today from day two of Media Days here in New Orleans. Um, Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Go to sm2media.com to read all of our coverage on uh, Sunbelt Media Days. I just put out a nice piece on that exclusive interview with uh, Will Hall. You can find it there. You can also find on this YouTube channel the full uh, main stage event when Southern Miss took the stage. Uh, so you can find that there. You can follow me on Twitter at Dima underscore Mixon. Thank you for everything uh, y'all do watching the channel. Subscribe if you, if you would like. And uh, we'll see you next week at fall camp. We'll, so the student prints will be there to cover it. And we'll be there uh, ready to go next week, next Wednesday, is when Southern Miss reports for fall camp. So this is Dio Mixon reporting in New Orleans, Louisiana.